Hello and welcome to this episode of the Grow VC Everyone Funding Startups podcast. I'm your host, Marcus, and today we're talking with Jay Gibb, founder of CloudSponge, among many other roles you've held along the way. Why don't we start off by having you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure, and thanks for having me, Marcus. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think, I guess I started my career as a programmer, and and then within a few years, a couple of years, moved on to to being a consultant to sort of take advantage of the dot-com boom that was going on in Silicon Valley. And then shortly after that, maybe a couple of years later, started getting into sort of managing consultants. Uh, turned out that I was I was one of the developers who was able to sort of speak well with, with management and entrepreneurs. Uh, so I kind of started pulling away a little bit from the, the programming role. And then over... Uh, I get over a few years. I went into, I guess, what's today what's called the Super Angel Group uh, to do some investing, and along the way there, founded my own company and started my own thing as well. So it's been kind of a journey from being uh, being in the in the binary trenches to uh, to being a founder. What was the actual defining moment that made you an entrepreneur? What was the was CloudSponge the first company that you founded? Uh, it's kind of a fuzzy line. I'm not sure if I can give you a defining moment. I, th- I think, uh, you know, throughout that whole journey I just described, uh, I was either working for as an employee or working for as a consultant or, or investing in startups the whole time. So, if, you know, for basically 15 years or so, I was just surrounded by entrepreneurs and sort of startup culture and people solving problems that they discovered on their own. And so I was able to, you know, first of all, learn from their successes, but more importantly, learn from their mistakes and, you know, be inspired by their passion and and so on. And so I think it was, it was just kind of a natural progression that, uh, you know, eventually kind of all came together and timing was right. And the, you know, the idea was right. And and so we decided to start CloudSponge. And could you tell us a little bit about CloudSponge? What does a startup actually do and, and what are you working on right now? What does it do? So it simplifies address book importing. So really, it, it makes it easy for for websites to be introduced to all of the people that their users know. So if you have a user on your website, they have their address book somewhere. You know, you know, most people have their address books nowadays in you know Gmail or Yahoo Mail or or uh, you know Windows Live, Hotmail. Um, some people use Outlook, some people use OSX address book. It really depends on, on sort of where they live and, and how they got introduced to, uh, to email in the first place most of the time. Uh, but the point is their address, address books are really everywhere. And um, <clears throat> we simplify the process and, I guess, centralize the process of, of getting those address books. So if somebody really wants to... You know, they really like your product, or they're they're raising money for charity, or they're doing doing something where they they want they want you to con- contact their friends or their contacts on you on their behalf. Then uh, you can integrate with CloudSponge, and and they'll you know we'll basically broker the process of of, of getting those address books out of those sources and, and give you the list of email addresses so that you can use them however you like. And since you've been involved in many different roles, uh, you've been involved with startups in different ways and other businesses. What do you think? How has the world changed or has the world changed being an entrepreneur? Well, yeah, it's absolutely changed. I guess it depends on how far back you want to look. Well, as far back as we need to. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's certainly changed, uh, you know, since, since, you know, the the dot com boom of silicon valley in the late 90s there's no question about that mostly in terms of things being you know 100 times cheaper uh, so a lot more young young individuals are able to start up their own companies and and we're able to to get you know get companies online anyway you know started for for very low cost and and you know start sort of following the uh, the Steve Blank kind of manifesto of of finding product market fit you know pretty quickly uh, so we're uh, 
you know, we actually, with Cloud Sponge, we actually, our students of Steve Blank and Sean Ellis, and, and we, uh, we went through the product market fit exercises and until we got to a, you know, scalable and repeatable business model and so on and so on. I think that kind of stuff and, and the fact that the, the process and the method of creating a startup is becoming sort of more, more academic. It's something that, it, you know, people talk about it more and it's a little bit less, um, less magic, I guess, so to speak, where, you know, people can actually learn from one another a little bit better and, and that information is starting to be shared. Uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely changing for the better, in my opinion. And when you made the transition to being a startup founder, how was the actual process of becoming a founder? Was it natural or was it very painful? Uh, I think for me it was pretty natural. Uh, it, was, um, it was something that I was eagerly looking forward to doing and just kind of waiting for the right opportunity to do it. Because of the situation that I, that I am in and was in where you know, I'm, I'm still managing a couple dozen, a few dozen developers, it was, it was really easy to put together a really good team of people and the right, you know, kind of build the right structure for a company and execute on, on a, an idea that I knew had a market because I had personally tried to solve that problem before and been through the, the headaches of trying to solve it. So it was, uh, it was, you know, it was definitely really natural. And let's talk a little bit about, about Cloud Sponge. So in terms of, uh, you've set up the startup, and what milestones have you gone through, and how far have you got with the Well, the milestones, you know, there's, I guess there's, there's a lot of them, so it's kind of hard to remember all of them. When did you start the but, startup? Uh, you know, I guess we started it fall of 2007, if you want to go back to kind of inception and identification of sort of a problem hypothesis. Uh, so it was pretty far back where, you know, we started to kind of uh, realize that there was, you know, in just trying to solve this problem, looking around for basically libraries that would do the things that need to be done either in open source or, or you know, vendor software that we could purchase. You know, we, we were, it was pretty obvious that there was an issue. And so we kind of had this epiphany that we should really start a business that centralizes it and makes it easy because it's it's a it's a common problem that, most websites, arguably all websites have, or all B2C websites anyway. And so uh, I guess back then, I guess I would call that the when we started it. And then there were lots of little milestones, you know, like red tape milestones and legal things that happened along the way that I don't remember the dates for those. Um, but we did, we spent a fair amount of time iterating, basically, you know, doing, do it, following the Steve Blank kind of process as quick as, as sort of accurately as possible trying to you know iterate quickly and find that product market fit and, and we went through lots of lots of little iterations before we got it right we're still getting it right now but i think now we've we've gotten the big parts right and we're sort of fine-tuning it now uh, and so that was kind of i guess there's lots of little milestones there but for me the big the big important one was that you know that moment where kind of realized that we had it because we got a lot of, uh, rather than getting feedback that said that people didn't understand or they, you know, they weren't buying or they weren't, you know, getting it, you know, at that point we started getting feedback where people were really excited and they really wanted it and they're, you know, eagerly clamoring to integrate with it and so on. So we knew something good was happening there. Um, <clears throat> and I guess, and then shortly thereafter we get to, uh, sort of the, um, the repeatable scalable milestone where we kind of started to, f now that we had some people to, to look to some customers some some people who wanted the product, we had enough, enough people to ask them how much they would pay and how they would pay and start to figure out, maybe not ask in the literal sense, but, you know, virtually kind of ask them by giving them an option and seeing if they choose it, so to speak. Um, and uh, we ended up with, you know, getting, you know, getting, uh, making some mistakes, but then, you know, getting to a milestone where we hit it, you know, we got the right pricing model and people now were both matched up with, we had a, we had a product that served them well and that solved the problem they had and also had a sort of a pricing structure and a, and a price point that, that they were willing to pay. And so for me, it, you know, if I look back, those, those were the two sort of, you know, biggest, most exciting milestones for us that we uh, kind of celebrated. And in terms of this uh, increased efficiency with startups and this kind of revolution in entrepreneurship, 
with uh, cost going down.